Hey there, John Morris here. I'm the lead instructor for the Wishlist Member Certified Developers Program and the CEO here at JohnMorrisOnline.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about the combo method of creating a responsive website. So um, this one's kind of cool. I honestly think that this particular layout is going to become more and more popular. Um, if you've taken a look at any of the you know the new stuff that uh, Facebook is doing with their new layout for their um, desktop version of their site, uh, you'll notice some familiarity here. Um, and I think we're going to, I just think in general, when it comes to building designs for uh, uh, that that work across a, a mobile device, a you know a laptop or desktop, a tablet, and so forth, and giving the really the exact same experience, um, no matter what device someone on is on, this is going to ultimately be probably the best solution um, because regardless of what they're on, they're going to get a really similar experience. That's one of the disadvantages of if you look at a fluid grid is that with a fluid grid eventually if you get to a small enough screen size you get to a point where it flips from a left to right or a side by side type layout to a top to bottom type layout um, and so what you end up with is you actually end up with a pretty significantly different experience yes they can see all the content yes it's mostly the same content but um, the way that it's displayed is a uh, is a lot different and so um, this combo layout kind of allows you to really minimize the difference um, between how uh, the way your site displays between tablets and all the different screen sizes and so um, you know one example that again I mentioned that you may be familiar with is this is kind of uh, what Facebook um, is moving to in terms of their layout for their uh, desktop version of their site and they're going to keep this pretty consistent across their all of their uh, mobile apps and so forth so uh, again that's why they're showing the phone here because you'll notice that the you know there obviously are differences because you're going to move use more of the screen when you have a larger screen however uh, as a general rule the the look and the usage of of the site is very similar, a lot more similar than, than it currently is. So um, that's what this kind of combo setup allows you to do. So um, the way it essentially works is you have a fixed uh, frame on say the left or you could do the right side, it really doesn't matter. But here we have it on the left side. So you have a fixed frame over here and then you have a main content area that is fluid and does uh, some more of the you know you could do all kinds of responsive stuff inside of here so if we shrink this screen um, you'll notice that you know the right side of this is fluid and the left side over here stays uh, stays the exact same size so it's only really the right side that as we move here is adjusting and and making it so again we don't have those dreaded scroll bar scroll bars um, then as we reach a certain point where the content is going to our, our frames are going to be about the same size and we want to um, get some more room for our main content area you'll notice that then we then shrink the frame okay and that gives us some more room for our main content area until we get down to our final kind of size um, and and that's where we're at so um, you know a lot of times what happens with this frame at that kind of point is you know with Facebook it looks like they're gonna just have icons um, you know small icons as is but sometimes this frame when it's in this expanded version these uh, you'll have the icons but then you'll have you know in this extra space here you'll have kind of the name of whatever this particular menu item is maybe a small description underneath of it and so you get a little more information with the larger frame so your menu items uh, come down here with an icon and a little description and then once you reach this point well then we we have limited screen space so we're just going to show the icon okay so that's you know that's one way of doing it obviously depending on what you're building you can kind of figure out how you want to manage that and how you want those different things to work but uh, that is kind of the 
the combo grid. So it's a combo because you have one fixed width frame or, or section here, and you have one fluid width uh, section or liquid width section. So again, we're not really using a grid uh, in the traditional sense here. Although if you wanted to inside of this main content area, you could absolutely use, still use the fluid grid setup, and that's probably uh, what you're going to want to do is use a fluid grid setup in, inside of here. Um, but you know, again, this this is this uh, section over here as a rule of thumb is a liquid uh, frame. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually set this up. So you notice that this is uh, quite a bit different than what we've looked at before. Um, so you know, we'll just start with our body tag. We're just kind of uh, this is uh, really just kind of resetting. Um, everything that the browser may do to our body tags we're getting rid of all the browser padding and so forth um, making sure that you know our, our divs expand to um, expand full height our body tag expands full height you'll notice that um, we have some hacks down here for ie6 that kind of are, are are meant to do the same thing so they just uh, kind of basically update ie6 to work kind of how more modern browsers do um, that are related to the body tag here. Um, oh, here it's uh, it has to do with margin versus padding and so forth on on this particular one. But the main thrust of what we're looking at is these two right here. So we have our span three, which is our left frame. So our black kind of frame here. That's our span three. So with it, what we're doing is we're positioning it absolutely. So we're positioning absolutely. Um, within its container, which happens to be the body tag, so we're we're positioning it at the very top left corner up here. Okay, and that's important to do so that um, when we get into the top and the bottom, and the you know uh, this is essentially kind of what helps this to stretch the full height. You'll notice that even though I have no content that fills this, that makes this frame be full height, it's still full height. Um, same with our main content area div over here uh, and that's done basically through this absolute positioning top bottom uh, and of course left um, for this fluid width again uh, with the fixed um, and then we're doing that uh, pos positioning and we're doing the top zero and we're doing the right zero bottom zero that's what allows those to be full width even though the content is actually making them full width um, which is important on this particular setup okay so uh, really the main thing here the big thing that we're looking at is our span 3 we're setting to a width of 300 pixels so this is however wide we want our frame to be so I pick 300 pixels you could pick 200 500 whatever you want this frame to be um, you pick that size and that matches up then over here on our fluid div we need to make sure that it's the uh, this left um, declaration here is the same as whatever we set our width to here that's what makes this uh, fluid or this liquid width frame so that it doesn't over try and overlap over here because these are both positioned uh, you know this absolutely and this fixed um, those if we don't set that correctly these will try to overlap one another all right so that's probably the main thing is getting this width and this left declaration here set to the exact same thing um, and then of course we have our overflow auto which allows us to you know scroll through um, you know as as we have more content down below here it'll make it scrollable and all that because of the way there's we're doing this we kind of need to uh, explicitly set that Right, and then um, this is our inner. So if we look at the HTML over here, you'll notice HTML is real simple. It's basically just this span three um, with this inner div inside of it and in our content, and then the span fluid with the inner div and uh, in our content inside of it. So it's really just two divs with this inner div inside each one. So this inner is essentially what allows us to um, set our margin and padding and so forth. So that's what gives us, when we look at this, you notice we have some space around our text here. That's what sets that. So you could, of course, increase that or decrease that as you see fit for your particular layout. 
right? as I mentioned, the hacks uh, for IE6, these may, you know, for you, you may decide that these aren't really necessary. IE6 is pretty old, so, uh, you know, supporting it is, is, you know, to me it's optional, <laughs> but I'll leave that up to you. All right, the last thing that we're going to look at here now here is the kind of the responsive part of this in, in terms of making the frame smaller as we get to a certain width. So when we reach a uh, basically a max width of 768 pixels, so anything 768 pixels and below, which if you know if you're familiar, that's an iPad in the vertical position. We're going to change the width of the span three. Up here, it's 300 pixels. We're going to change that to 100 pixels. And so when we do that, we also need to change the left decoration of our span, span fluid to 100 pixels as well so that these match. Okay, so that's what gives us the, the transition from the wider frame on the left to the narrow frame on the left. Okay, so uh, obviously, again, you know, on this right hand side here. Depending on how you want to manage this, you know, you can do, you could again use some of the other approaches like the fluid grid inside of here. And so your CSS would contain uh, a lot of that, um, a lot of that CSS as well that we already talked about in uh, the fluid grid. So you could still use that on that right side. But uh, again, this gives you kind of a combination approach that, in my opinion, I, I just. I'll admit I'm a fanboy of this uh, type of design. I think it's really cool, and I think this is where a lot of things are headed. Um, you know, as we become more integrated with mobile devices and and apps and and so forth, uh, because it helps you create a more consistent uh, design across all of those devices. The only real change is when you get to really small devices, making this smaller, but. Uh, that's a pretty small change uh, when you when all things considered. So, um, so that's kind of the combo approach. Again, a combo approach because you have a fixed width and you have a liquid uh, liquid uh, frame here. Um, so that is how to do the combo approach. Again, you can move this over to the right side if you wanted to, um, or, or whatever the case may be uh, for your particular. So again, that's how to do the combo design. Hopefully you enjoyed that. 